Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give all of you a quick rundown of layers and layer masks inside of GIMP. Pretty much the same information is going to apply to other uh, photo and video editing programs as well. Layers are sort of a universal thing when it comes to editing graphics on the computer. So what a layer is, is a way of separating part of your document from other parts of your document. So this allows you to do things like make changes to one layer without having it affect anything else in the image. Having your document separated into different pieces is really handy for multiple reasons. One of which is that if you decide that after working on one layer for a while, that you don't like any of the changes that you've made while working on that layer. Well, you can delete that, but it's not gonna delete your entire document. It's only gonna be deleting the information inside of that layer. Also, if you decide to draw onto a layer with something like the paintbrush tool, we can go ahead and do that right now, just as a quick example. So paintbrush in the top left, I'm gonna go to the bottom right, which is where you will find layers by default in GIMP. And I'm gonna click on this flock of birds image off of Pixabay. Now, if I start drawing on the main image area, this change I make with this random white paintbrush line is going to be applying to the currently selected layer. So if I hide the layer by left clicking on this eyeball here, you'll see that it doesn't affect the underlying thunderstorm background at all. So we make changes to one layer, but we don't destroy the other layers. And that's gonna be really important if we need to undo changes or we want to make adjustments to one layer. We don't have to worry about anything else that we might be affecting. So for instance, if I re-enable this layer with the eyeball icon and I take the eraser tool over here, let me increase the size so that I can capture all of this white area. And I wanna erase this white line. Well, I just need to trace this line and it's gonna be really easy to do so without affecting the background because the background is on a separate layer. But you can imagine that if I drew everything on the same layer, that this would be really tricky, nigh on impossible actually, to erase it without affecting the background. Actually, it really would be impossible because once you draw onto a layer, if you draw over something, then that is gonna erase the underlying details. So for instance, if I go to this thunderstorm layer, paintbrush tool, and then we draw a line here, so now if we take the eraser tool and we try to erase this white line, well, there's nothing underneath the white line on this layer, actually. The only thing we're seeing is really the background layer here that starts to show through. Since we remove this part, it turns transparent and that lets the background layer show. So that's another thing about layers that's really important. The ordering of your layers over in this layer box in the bottom right, whatever is on top is going to show first and then as you go down the list, it's going to show the other layers as long as it isn't covered up by a higher layer. So we'll only see the background layer if these other two layers that we have aren't covering up the background. So if I hide both of these layers with the eyeball icon, we can see the background shows through. If I use the eraser on the thunderstorm layer, then of course we can see the background because there's nothing underneath here that would block the background layer. But if we go to this flock of birds and then we erase one of these birds like so, then what we see is actually the thunderstorm because the ordering puts the thunderstorm in the middle. So the ordering of your layers is extremely important. If you wanna add text to an image, then you would of course want that to be a higher layer than whatever your background image is so that the text can show on top of your background. So that we can actually see this flock of birds a little bit better, I'm gonna go up to colors and I'm gonna invert this layer. So once again, we can actually see that because the birds are separate on their own layer, we can apply an effect to that entire layer and we don't affect the background at all. So we're able to change all of the birds instantaneously to a white color by inverting the color and we don't affect the background layers. So that's another super handy example of just why layers are so important to uh, photo and image editing. Okay, so one more thing before we move on to layer masks. You can actually group layers together by creating a layer group. So in the bottom right hand corner, there's this icon that will say create a new layer group and add it to the image. If you click on that, this is kind of like having a folder in Windows where you can drag different files or other folders into it. So you group items together and that allows you to make a change to multiple layers at the same time. Sometimes you actually want that so that you just don't have to repeat the same effect on multiple layers that you wanted to basically recreate the same thing over and over again on. So I can take these two images and just 
left click, hold, and drag them into your layer group. So I'll do that with the thunderstorm as well. And ordering still matters. So even inside of a layer group, whatever is on top is going to show first. So I want the flock of birds to be reordered here. Just drag and drop. But now I can click on a layer group and you can edit the layer group affecting everything inside of the layer. So one way you could do that is the move tool. So we click on the move tool. We want to be in move the active layer mode. So you can hit shift in order to do that. What that means is that rather than the layer you click on on the screen, it's going to be whatever layer you have in the layer box that's selected that's going to move. So holding shift down to do move the active layer, I can left click on the screen and we're going to move both the flock of birds and thunderstorm at once. So if you need things to stay lined up with each other, uh, maybe you're doing some web design or something like that, uh, then layer groups are going to be really handy since you could just move them together and they'll be spaced the same distance between each other. OK, so now let's jump into layer masks. So layer masks are a way of taking a layer and telling GIMP which areas of that layer you actually want to show onto the screen and which ones you don't. So you're editing the alpha of a layer at different areas that you draw onto or you fill with the bucket tool, however you decide to draw that layer mask on. And then you're hiding or showing part of that layer to the final image. And one advantage of layer masks is that it's non-destructive. So it doesn't actually edit the underlying layer. You're only showing or hiding part of that layer. You're masking it out. So you can take any layer and add a layer mask. For instance, this flock of birds, I'll right click on it. And then we have add layer mask in the menu right here. So when you do this, you have the ability to set the default initial layer mask. So white Full opacity means that everything inside of the layer is going to be completely visible. Black means it's going to be completely transparent. And there's other options as well. For instance, if you have initialized layer mask to selection, then whatever you have currently selected uh, using tools like rectangular select is going to be shown, I believe. And then everything outside of that is going to be hidden based on the layer mask. So let's initialize to full opacity white initially. When we do that, we'll see this other thumbnail image pop next to our layer. So the image on the right is the layer mask. We can see that everything inside of it is full white, which means it's going to be completely visible. Now, note if you look at it, that there's some extra space on top and extra space on bottom. So if you wanted this layer to actually be the size of the image document itself, then what you can do is hit Control Z a couple times, undo the layer mask. I'm going to select this layer. And we're going to do right click and then we're going to do layer to image size. So when we do that, you can see that the dotted line stretches to the size of the image. Now, if we go back, right click, add layer mask and initialize again, we can see now this thumbnail actually takes up the full size of our image document. Might be preferable in many cases. So now the idea is that white is going to be fully visible. Black is going to be completely invisible. And then any shades of gray between there are going to be partially visible. Uh, the more white it looks, the, the closer it is to white, the more visible it's going to be. So we can draw onto a layer mask using tools like paintbrush and then selecting a color. The color itself doesn't matter. Only the luminescence value is going to matter here. So I can pull down on this luminescence scale to 50% if I want it to be 50% transparent. And then let's just go ahead and draw on to the layer mask. So on the layer, you can see that you can left click between the layer thumbnail and the layer mask thumbnail. So that's really important. Whichever one you're drawing on is going to be the one receiving the paintbrush. Whichever one you have selected is going to receive the edits you make. So if you want to change the transparency, make sure you have the layer mask selected and then the thumbnail will be a little bit bigger over here. So now we can take this paintbrush and draw onto whatever we need. So as I go over all of these birds, you can see that they kind of turn gray. But what's really happening is that they're becoming 50% transparent. So the background colors of these clouds in the background are showing 50% through the uh, birds. So it kind of actually looks like our birds become part of the cloud. We can see how the base layer actually looks by right clicking on a layer and then doing disable layer mask. So when we do that, you can see we still have all of the white birds on the screen. We haven't actually edited it in any way. The only changes we're making are on the layer mask. Just like with separating your image into separate layers, how you can edit things individually, 
So just like how we can separate our image into separate layers, we can further separate some of the changes we make by using layer masks. So for instance, in this case, by re-enabling the layer mask, we can make part of this layer partially transparent without affecting the base layer. And that means that if we ever want to remove these edits on the layer mask, we could just right click the layer, delete the layer mask or disable it. So drawing with the paintbrush on a layer mask is a little bit tedious. Another option you might want to consider would be a linear gradient. So that can be one way to have the layer become partially visible. So that can be one way to make it so that the layer becomes more visible as it goes from one direction to another. So the paint bucket. So over here in the toolbox top left, you can right click on the paint bucket and you can drop down to gradient. So now we want to select so because we're working on the so because we're working on the layer mask, we're going to want the gradient to go from white to black and all the shades in between. So I'm going to select uh, foreground to background RGB colors. And now we just need to choose black and white as our two colors in this selection. So let's go ahead and do that. And then you can see the little thumbnail for the gradient is going from white to black. So that's going to mean wherever we start from is going to be fully visible and wherever we end is going to be completely invisible. So if I left click somewhere around here on the left side and we drag this over to the far right side, we can hold control if we need it to snap to a perfectly horizontal line. And you can already see the preview kind of popping up there in uh, the document. So when we let go, we're going to have basically the finalized preview of that gradient. You can, of course, move the endpoints still if you need to or left click. So of course you can still move the endpoints if you need to. You can hold Alt if you want to move the entire line up or down. So just position it wherever you need to. And when you're done, you can hit Enter to commit it. So you'll see on the layer mask, we have a gradient over here. But once again, it doesn't actually directly affect the underlying image of all of these bird silhouettes. We're only adding a transparency layer on top of that with the layer mask. So finally, it's worth noting that you can do that with a layer group as well. So if we wanted to take both of these underlying layers and make them partially transparent as they go left to right, then instead of applying the layer mask to the flock of birds, and I'll go ahead and disable this layer mask right now, then I can right click the layer group and add a layer mask. Well, let's do full transparency by default. And now left clicking on the layer mask, we can use the gradient tool. Let's go from bottom to top this time, holding control down to get a perfectly straight vertical line. Hit enter. And now you can see how the background partially shows through. The closer we get to the bottom here, the more these two layers are still going to show through since we have white colors on the bottom and black colors on the top. So finally, just to show how layers can be really helpful when you mess up, let's just say that everything we've done in this tutorial has been Pretty much complete rubbish. Obviously, it kind of looks terrible. So let's go ahead and delete some layers. I'm going to pull this thunderstorm out to the very bottom uh, so that we can just see the other stuff on top of it. And now I'm going to delete the layer group, which also deletes all of the layers inside of that layer group. So be careful about that. Let's click the delete layer button and then let's also delete the background itself. So now we are just left with this original background layer. And the only changes that still persist are the ones we've already made to this layer specifically. So as you can see, because we made the actual layer information uh, partially transparent over here, at this point, it would be pretty much impossible to restore these areas. At this point, we probably couldn't easily restore these areas without just bringing the image back in as a new layer in this document. So if you want to make it transparent, a better option would have been to right click on the layer, add a layer mask, full opacity by default. And now let's draw on this layer with a black colored paintbrush. And we can achieve basically the same results, making part of our layer transparent, but without destroying the image itself. So now I can right click on the layer, disable the layer mask and hide all of that. I can even delete the layer mask if I just want to get rid of all of those changes entirely. But if you make a change to a layer directly, then you're going to end up with this situation where unless you are going to hit Control Z to undo a bunch of times and go back some steps or open up Windows dockable dialogues and undo history and then find where you made that change and then you can revert straight to that up here. So you can just left click on the step that you made that change. 
But then if you do that, you're going to lose all of the changes made past that. Then, yeah, you really got to be careful about editing on a layer. So the more layers you actually create, most likely the better off you're going to be in the long run, because if you make a bad change, it's only going to be affecting a little bit of your document, not the whole thing. So hopefully that gives all of you a good overview of layers and layer masks inside of GIMP. If you're editing any kind of computer graphic, then layers are going to be really handy. Whether you're working in GIMP, Krita, Photoshop, or even 3D tools like Blender, layers are going to be there and are extremely important. So I hope all of you learned a lot from this video. Thank you for watching. I've been Chris, and I will see you in my future video content.